Hello and welcome to lesson 23.5 in the Python tutorial series. Today we're going to continue working with lists like we have in the past, uh, only this time we're going to look at different list methods. Now in lesson 23.3 we saw how lists are actually objects and change almost instantaneously. They almost act as if they're global variables. Uh, but We've changed a lot of the lists, but something we haven't done yet has been able to insert information into lists on the fly. This is really important because a lot of times when you're making, say, a video game, you're going to want to keep the inventory of the player in a list, and so it's something that can grow and change. They might have nothing in their backpack, or they might have a lot of stuff. We're going to be looking at a list of probably 10 different methods that we can use to control the value of our lists. And I'm guessing that this will be a two-part video just because the, of the sheer amount of things we have to cover. And most of what we'll be doing in this lesson will be done in the Python shell as we give you examples of how to use these different list methods. In the next video, after we introduce all these list methods, we'll put them together and make a uh, simple game. And that's where you'll find the Lesson 23 uh, challenge program for list methods. So let's go ahead and get started with some additional list methods we can use to control the value of our lists. Okay, so here we are in our Python shell, and we're going to be looking at a series of, I, I think, probably about 10 different methods. So I'll try and keep those uh, categorized over here on the programming window, because we won't be using that a whole lot for this lesson. And there really is a lot of information to take in here in Lesson 23.5. Now to start off, we're going to just initialize a variable, and we'll call it colors, and set it equal to the list of red and blue. So right now, colors is a single list that has two elements, red and blue. Now in our previous lessons, we've looked at how to manipulate the data with inside a list. For example, we could access colors at index location zero, and set it equal to yellow instead of red. When I access the colors variable now, you can see red has changed to yellow, and I can change it back simply by accessing colors at index location 0 and changing it back to red. So we've done all that stuff, but one of the things that we haven't looked at how to do yet is how to add and remove information from a list we've already initialized. Right now, you could change the two elements just by accessing the index locations, but what if you wanted to add a third color or a fourth or a fifth color? That's where you're going to need these list methods. And the first list method we're going to look at is called the append method. This will allow us to add information to the end of our list. So if I were to access the colors variable and run the append method, passing in an argument of yellow, you can see that our colors variable now has yellow as a value or as an element inside the list. So append will allow us to add new information to the end of our list. One of the things you can't do with append is add multiple bits of information. Append allows you to add information really just one element at a time. So if I were to access colors and append it using neon green, and hot pink, I'm going to get an error. I'll get a type error. Append takes exactly one argument to given. I can't provide multiple arguments to append. It will only add one bit of information at a time. This is where extend is going to uh, help us out. But before we look at the extend variable, um, there's a couple things with append that we might also want to take a look at. First off, append can only work on a list variable. So if I were to create a variable called string and set it equal to the value of yellow, if I try and run the append method on a string, so let's say I wanted to append red to yellow, this is also going to return an error. It's an attribute error. These methods only work on list values, nothing else. Since string contains a string value and not a list, it's going to return an error. So all of these list methods that we look at are going to only work on list data types. Now sometimes we might want to add multiple bits of information at the same time. 
Let's create a, a test variable here, and we'll call this test list one, and we'll set it equal to a value of red and blue, just like our original. Let's take a look at test list one here. Maybe we want to add two new colors to this at the same time, say yellow and brown. And so just like I did up, up uh, several examples ago, if I were to try and append yellow and brown at the same time, I'm going to get that error because I can't add two things at once. So a solution might be to add a list yellow and brown because that would be considered one data type. So if I ran test list one dot append and tried to add the list value of yellow and brown, it's going to create a little bit of a bug. And that's because if I access test list one now, you can see red and blue are there and it did add yellow and brown as a list, but it added yellow and brown as a single element. That means if I look at test list at index location two, it appended a list within a list. Now that's a, not exactly what I'm going for. What I want is yellow and brown both to be added as individual elements inside my list. So list.append works very well if you want to add a single element to a list. If you want to add multiple elements to your list, this is where list.extend is going to come in handy. So let's go back to our colors variable here, which is equal to red, blue, and yellow. And let's use the extend method to add multiple bits of information. Now, just like the append method, extend takes only a single argument. So if I were to run colors.extend and try to pass in, again, yellow and brown, I'm going to get the same error that I got with append. In order to use the extend method, you need to pass in a list value as an argument. So if I said colors.extend, the list of yellow and brown, this is going to take each individual element and add it to my desired list, just one element at a time. So if I take a look at colors now with colors extend, I can see that yellow and brown have both been added to my list. Now you'll notice yellow has been added twice. Lists can have multiple ver or can have the same data over and over and over again. We're probably going to have to do something about that. But for right now, our list contains red, blue, yellow, yellow, and brown, five elements at index locations zero through four. Now let's pull up test list number one. This, is, this list is already kind of screwed up, so let's use the extend command. And one of the common mistakes that people make when using extend, which even causes some programmers not to use the extend command at all, is that they forget that extend is really looking for a list value. So if we were to test list one dot extend, and not provide in a list vari uh, value, rather provide a string, we'll call it hot pink. This will work, but remember in a string, each individual character is its own element. When I take a look at test list one now, using the extend command, each individual element of the character gets added as an element to the list. So test list one, isn't looking too hot right now because by misusing the append command, we've added a list within a list. And by misusing the extend command, we've added individual characters in as elements of our list and not the entire color itself. So let's go over that one more time without all the errors. We're going to initialize a new variable called colors and set it equal to red and blue if we want to add a single element to our colors list, we simply use colors.append and provide in a color or pri pr provide in the element that we want added to our list, in this case, the color yellow. Using the append method, we can add a single bit of data to our list at a time. 
if I want to add multiple objects or multiple items at once, I can use extend and provide in a list argument. So let's add hot pink and neon green. Make sure that it's a list variable or a list data type. And now the, each element will get added to the end of our list. Oh, I misspelled extend there. Let's try that one more time. Colors.extend the list value of hot pink and neon green. Close my list. Close the argument. And now take a look at colors. And we can see that hot pink and neon green got added as individual elements of the list. So that is two of the ways that you can add new information to your lists. Now let's take a look at how we can take information out of the list once it's in there. To start pulling data out of our list, we're going to use what I think is the most important of all the list manipulation methods. That's the list.pop method. List.pop will take the last item on the list and return it as a value. So if I were to take colors and pop it. You can see I'm not providing an argument here. I can provide an index value, but I'm not worried about that right now. So I'm going to run colors.pop. It's going to return a value of neon green. Now, if I take a look at my colors list, I can see that not only was neon green returned as a value, but it was also removed from the list entirely. So if I were to run colors.pop again, it returns hot pink this time. And as you might imagine, hot pink has now been removed from our list. So the colors.pop will return a value, and that will be whatever the last item in your list is. This becomes really useful if you wanted to say, well, let's add item equals colors.pop. What this is going to do is pop the last value off of your list, in this case, yellow and store it in the value item. Item is now equal to the string yellow because it was popped out of the list. And colors now contains only red or blue. You th think of the application of this almost like uh, if you're writing an adventure game and the user has health potions and the user wants to drink a health potion, then you can use the dot pop command to take the health potion out of their inventory and store that value somewhere else and maybe use it to add hit points to the character or whatever you want to do. But colors.pop not only returns a value, but also takes it out of the list. So our colors list is getting kind of sparse there. So let's go ahead and append in a couple more colors for us to use. So we'll add in a yellow color and let's append in brown. So now we have a list of red, blue, yellow, and brown. Well, pop is not the only way to remove items from a list. We can also use list.remove and then pick what we want removed. So I could say colors.remove and provide in yellow as an argument. And I've managed to remove yellow. Now two distinctions about this, or maybe the most important distinction, is that colors.remove is able to remove information from the middle of the list, but it also doesn't return a value. That means I couldn't set new color equal to colors.remove brown. If I do that, colors is still missing brown, but new color doesn't take on a value. That's because colors.pop returns an appropriate value where colors.remove simply removes the item from the list or removes that particular element from the list. But it doesn't return a value, so I can't use that to manipulate other variables. Colors.remove will also give you an error if you try and remove something that's not in the list. So if I colors.remove brown again, Brown is not in my list anymore because my list contains only red and blue. And I'm going to get a value error, list.remove x, x is not in the list. So using colors.remove to try and remove an element
that isn't located inside of my list is going to cause an error. So that's how the remove command works. Let's go ahead and append in some more colors. So let's add brown back into our list and add yellow back into our list. Take a look at colors and we have four elements again, red, blue, brown, and yellow. Sometimes the order of your list is important. There is a method called reverse that will simply reverse the order of your list. So we have red, blue, brown, and yellow. If I wanted to reverse these orders, I could say colors.reverse. It doesn't change any of the data contained in my list, but it does swap the order that they're in. So the last item in your list will become the first, the second to last will become your second, and it pretty much flip-flops the value that your list contains. Colors now equals yellow, brown, blue, and red, which is simply the same list backwards. And I, of course, if I wanted it back to normal, I can colors.reverse and put it back to red, blue, brown, and yellow. So colors.reverse simply takes the list and puts it in reverse order. And that's what we're going to call this video right here. Now, again, there's not a lot of practical application in this particular video. I just want to make sure that everybody is aware of the methods that modify a list. We are going to be using them in an actual program, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone sees how they work and, and kind of sees them in the Python shell before we get to that point. Now, again, this video is getting a little bit long, so we're going to cut it here. And when we come back for lesson 23.6, We'll look at a few more of the list uh, manipulation methods, get those up and running, take a look at how they, they work, talk about randomizing lists, and then once we've taken a look at all these list manip manipulation methods, we'll put it together into a simple game, and that's where you'll find the challenge program. So, you know, I hope that you found this useful, even though if it, mi it might not be immediately practical for the programs that you're writing. But as always, if you have any questions or something isn't working for you, or you need help with some code that you're working on, go ahead and post those in the comments and I will be happy to help you out. As always, thank you so much for watching the Python tutorial series. We'll see you next time and have a great day.